Hi there. My name is Doug Worley. I'm here to speak with you about how to set up a new airport base station. Uh, first off, we're going to be using the Airport Express for this demonstration. So I'm going to pull up the Safari page here. See, it's a wee little guy. There are a number of ways you can configure it. You have a tool that we'll take a look at in a moment called Airport Ex uh, uh, Utility, Airport Utility, that is available for use on your Mac or PC or your mobile devices like an iPhone or an iPad. Uh, number of cool features that you can use it for. It's great for the home, but the reason I'm bringing this page up is to look at these ports in the back. Uh, first off, the power cable, rather self-explanatory. Two Ethernet ports that we'll compare in a moment. A USB port and an audio port. The USB port, you can plug in a printer. Some devices can plug in a hard drive and this machine can act like a file server. This particular device, the Express, can act like a audio output device from iTunes or your iPhone remote app or iPod player, and over the network it can send to these speakers. Pretty slick. The reset device that you can use a bent paper clip, also known as the Macintosh Disk Ejection Tool, to reset. So that neat little tool makes it come back. Uh, but back to these Ethernet ports. One is called the WAN port. Has an icon like a globe, and that's kind of how you can think of it. It connects to the World Wide Web. So this is the cable where you would connect your modem cable that comes out of your IS, uh, from your ISP, your Internet Service Provider modem. Plug that into here to go to the outside world, like the globe. And then there's the local area network, the LAN port, that has a standard regular Ethernet connector that like matches onto your uh, switches or the back of your computer. So this is for the local devices in your home. I'll get this out of the way here. And the tool we'll use to configure our airport device is called Airport Utility, and you'll find that in your Utilities folder. So first off, there are no devices on my network, uh, but this tool still makes a connection out to the internet. I'm connected through a internet Ethernet cable, and it sees this device, and it automatically connects to the unconfigured airport device on your network, and then asks, how do you want to configure it? So there'll be two settings I'm going to make at the beginning. One is called uh, the network name. This is going to be the broadcast name of my Wi-Fi network, uh, the name that you're going to select to join the network from your iPhone or your computer. I'm going to call this home Wi-Fi. And then the base station name. If you happen to have more than one device, or you want to uh, configure it to send audio, this is the name of that device. So I'm going to call this living room. And I'll give it a password. Make sure this is uh, s safe enough that someone cannot ch discover it uh, easily by just typing in uh, common words. But don't make it so hard that you will forget it and you should probably document it somewhere safely. Uh, a sticky note written on top of the device is, is really not considered safe, so... <laughs> Alright. So it'll take a moment to spin through all the settings to save its configurations. And look at that! We're done. And after reconnecting, it does another scan. This tool is useful right here. You can see that the green status indicators for internet and for this device show that there's a good connection. Uh, if you're having problems connecting, opening up this tool and just taking a look at this heads up viewer with the green dot for internet, green dot for name of your device is a really useful first step. If I select my device, it shows me basic information, it shows the serial number, the version number of the firmware, its IP address, and all of that. I can click on edit to configure the settings. First off, base station name. Again, this is the name of the device. Uh, and the, the name, name to configure the base station, or the password to configure the base station. There's then internet. Since it saw DHCP is running on the network, it chose to not configure its own settings. Uh, stat did not cons need a static assignment. Under wireless, this is the name of the wireless name. So on my device, my computer, my iPhone, I would choose to join this name. And here's the password. Again, the password I entered under base station to modify the device is the same password as to join its network. So at this point, you can choose to change those passwords to make them different, or you can keep them the same 
as per default. It should probably be fine. Uh, the default security is WPA2 personal, which is fine for most needs. And then under network, since it saw DTP running earlier, it did not need you to set up anything else. It automatically used that DHCP, which is honestly pretty slick. But if you need to, you can configure other settings to have it set up its own routing function if need be. And under AirPlay, if you're using this device as a uh, AirPlay device, which will allow it to receive audio from your Mac or your iPhone or iPod, it will then show up as the name that you enter here to make it different from the device name, or it'll be the same. And you can choose an optional separate password. Uh, but that's it. Hope that was informative. I look forward to speaking with you again. Have a good day. Bye-bye.